Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX is my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! anime of all time. However, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds came right after and it's something I grew up with as well. And one of my favorite, if not my absolute favorite archetype to come out of the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds anime is Blackwing. Blackwing is such a cool deck and in today's format, you can actually be highly competitive with it. Now, there are so many different builds of Blackwing running around, but in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys a more or less pure build of Blackwing and how you can play it competitively in today's format. So with that being said, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I I'm excited to show you guys Blackwing in today's video. So with that, let's get right into the deck profile. So to start things off, of course, we are playing three Blackwing Samoon, the Poison Wind, one of the most important cards in your deck. In fact, it's the most important normal summon of the deck. Now you guys might be wondering, how are you normal summoning a level six monster? Well, the reason you're going to be able to summon this is because if you control no monsters, and this is why this is the best starter card for you, you can actually place a Black Whirlwind from your deck to your side of the field, and then you're going to be able to immediately normal summon this card right afterwards, which is really powerful because then you can get the Black Whirlwind effect off. So that's why we're playing three Samoon, one of the most important cards in the deck. Another really important card is three of the Blackwing Sudri. Sudri is important in a lot of your combo pieces. It's a combo starter for you as well. None of these cards are one card combos really honestly, but with two cards, a lot of these cards do a lot of things. So that's why Sudri is a three of because this paired with any other Blackwing name can be very powerful. Another very powerful card and another starter for you is three Blackwing Vada, the Emblem of the Wandering. Vada is an insane card, absolutely insane. Being able to get you into your Blackwing Dragon, being able to synchro summon from your deck, very important to be playing three of the Vada. It gets all of your combos rolling. And again, the whole point of this deck is just to be as consistent as possible so samoon vada sudri and then for even more consistency we're playing three of the blackwing shamal the sandstorm this card is pretty okay at two but i actually decided to max out on this because being able to pitch this from your hand means that you can get your black feather whirlwind from your deck straight to face up to your side of the field so it's really good because it plays around stuff like ash and stuff which is really important but the other really cool thing about this card and the reason why i'm playing three rather than two because you could play two of this and then two of the black feather but i'm actually deciding to play three of this and one and and that's because just having that extra name in your hand getting it to the graveyard being able to use this as an extender for you as well is really powerful it gets back the blackwing monsters that are in your graveyard so that's why i'm playing the three shamal i think it's really important just being able to see this card seeing a black feather whirlwind doesn't really do much for you versus seeing this card does a lot more that's why i'm playing three of the shamal so three shamal and then for the one of of course we're playing the one zephyros very powerful card but it's just really a one of in these decks one harma in one chinook one Sharanga and one Oroshi. These are the one of Blackwing names. These cards are the cards you're going to be searching a lot of the time off of your Black Whirlwind because these are all like low attack monsters and they get a lot of your combos extended rather than starting your combos, right? So while these cards help you start all of your combos, these cards over here are the complementary pieces to get your combos rolling, but they don't actually start any combos on their own, which is why you're only playing one ofs. Now to continue on with the monster cards, we are also playing one Assault Synchron, one Radiant, three Ash Blossom, two Valor, as well as three Imperm. Now, I want to talk about these just real quick. I guess Imperm is not a monster, but it's a hand trap, so I'm going to include it in this section over here. But the reason why I want to be talking about these cards is because we're also playing three Small World. Now, the really crazy thing about Small World is it's such a powerful consistency piece in the deck. And the reason for that is because you can bridge from your Blackwing cards to your Radiant or to your Assault Synchron. You can bridge from these cards into your Blackwing cards. Same thing with Valor. You can use Valor to bridge into a lot of the cards as well. So not only are we playing these as hand traps and Valor in general is just a really powerful hand trap we're also playing small world which is going to help us bridge into either our consistency if we need to see one of the blackwing names or if we have too many of the blackwing names we can see cards like assault synchron radiant to help us break boards or even an effect Valor, which is absolutely insane we can also use this to bridge into any of the other cards as well so that's why we're playing the three small world the fact that you can play radiant in the main deck is very powerful because playing a main deck kaiju that's also searchable is really powerful in pretty much any deck because you know that if you really need to get to this you're going to be able to and then when you do get to this, you're going to be able to break a lot of boards as well. So that's why, of course, the one radian is really powerful. The one assault synchron as an extender as well. And keep in mind, drawing these cards doesn't hurt either. Because if you draw them, you can still use them with small world. But even if you're not using them with small world, these cards are powerful on their own, right? Assault synchron being an extender. And this card, if you're going second, to help you break boards as well. So I really like this lineup over here of both the hand traps as well as the consistency pieces. Because they do pretty much everything for you. Extender, board breakers, board stoppers, as well as consistency over here. So to go through the rest of the deck here, we are playing two Black Whirlwind and one Black Feather Whirlwind. You only need two Black Whirlwind. I know a lot of people, and I, I trust me, I've played this deck for so long. I know playing three just feels like the right thing to do, but two is actually the most optimal number. We are playing three Samoon, and honestly, Black Whirlwind doesn't really do much with your other normal summons because they're all pretty low attack. Black Whirlwind is only really great with Sudri or Samoon. It's not really great with any of the other names, so that's why we're just playing the two. We're always going to be able to get it with our Samoon, and then Black Feather Whirlwind, of course, being able to get it with Shamal 
is really important. And we're just playing the one. You guys can cut Shamal to two and play two of this. But seeing this card in your hand doesn't help you do much. But seeing the Shamal does. And seeing the Shamal is very powerful. So that's why I like playing the one Whirlwind and three Shamal. Then for more consistency, we are playing three Allure of Darkness. With Small World and Allure of Darkness, this deck is pretty consistent. You get through your deck pretty quickly. And all the monsters in your deck are dark. So you're always going to have something for Allure of Darkness. Now, I do want to talk about something real quick. You can play Upstart Goblin here. With the January 2024 ban list, I think Upstart Goblin is a very powerful card that you guys can play. The only reason I'm playing Allure, actually, is because I feel like Allure in itself is just so powerful in so many different ways. The really cool thing about Allure is it's drawing you two cards. Yes, while Upstart is always going to get you to draw one, it's kind of like a one for one. It's a net zero. Whereas Allure, yes, it might be a net zero as well because you're going to have to banish a card. Even banishing a card is not a bad thing because you have something like Black Feather Whirlwind, which when you synchro summon a dark synchro monster, you can special summon a banished Blackwing monster. So that's really why I really like playing the Black Feather Whirlwind and then the three Allure of Darkness. But again, if you guys just wanted to make this a 37 card deck, just play three Upstart Goblin. You guys can do that as well. I still really like Allure. We're also playing two Triple Tactics Talent. This is really powerful as a board breaker for you. It's also a draw engine if you need it to be. And it's also kind of like a change of heart also if you need it to be, right? So Tactics Talent is really powerful. If you're going first, a lot of time you can also rip cards out of your opponent's hand. So that could be really powerful. One Call by the Grave, of course, for hand traps. And then lastly, one Blackwing Twin Shadow. You want to end a lot of your combos on the Twin Shadow because you want to set up your Silver Wind on your opponent's turn. Being able to flip this, summon Silver Wind, pop cards your opponent controls, very powerful in that sense. So we're only playing the one Twin Shadow. And then these cards all for consistency as well as just the board breaking presence. But again, you guys can play Upstart here instead of the Lore of Darkness. I just think Allure synergizes really well with this deck. One, because they're all dark, but Black Feather Whirlwind also gets you back your banished monsters. Moving on to the extra deck over here. These are pretty standard ratios, I would say. So we're playing two of the Black Winged Assault Dragon. Sometimes you can go first and end up on both of these. And the really cool thing is ending on both of these means that you're going to be able to burn your opponent for a lot of damage each and every single time they activate a card. So I really like two of the Black Winged Assault Dragon. Very powerful card. We're playing one Black Winged Full Armor Master. This is kind of like a Towers for the deck. You can make this a lot of the time just to end on, but it also pushes for a lot of damage if you're going into turns two and turns three. One Silver Wind, of course, if you're making Silver Wind with your Twin Shadow, you're going to be able to pop cards. 2800 is also no joke, helps you push for a lot of damage. One of the Nathung, one Berea Storm, two of the Black Winged Dragon. The reason we're playing two Black Winged Dragon and not just the one, although you guys can just play the one, it's actually really powerful to have a second name just as an extender, turns two and turns three to make another one, which becomes really powerful as well. So I do like playing the two Black Winged Dragon, one Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend Abyss. The reason this card is really powerful as well is because Black Winged Dragon is a level eight, you can use this plus another level one to make an Abyss. And that's why I also like playing the second Black Wing. That's another reason, right? So I really like playing Abyss as a disruption. We're playing one Draco Berserker, very powerful dark level eight synchro that you guys can make against a lot of decks. This being able to banish cards is really good. It's also a really big beater for you. So I really like the one Draco Berserker. One this powder, of course, I think this also makes a lot of sense in the deck. Keep in mind, this batter also really works well with Allure of Darkness. And that's why I was kind of talking about Allure of Darkness rather than Upstar Goblin, because you have cards like this powder. You have cards like Black Feather Whirlwind to get back your banished cards and kind of just make this live, right? So that's why I like playing the disc powder. Then for Link Monsters, we're playing the one Y Strix, the one IP Mascarina, the one Unicorn, as well as the one Axis Code Talker. Now, if you guys have SP Little Knight, by all means, please play SP Little Knight over this. I just don't have an SP Little Knight, which is why I'm playing the Unicorn. But I think these ratios, other than that, are absolutely perfect. I think these cards over here, I wouldn't change really much of the extra deck outside of an SP Little Knight if I had one. Moving on to the side deck, we are playing two Pankratops. Cards finally back at two. This card's absolutely insane. And at two, I think it's really justifiable to be playing this card. It's really good against front row matchups. It's also really good against back row matchups. So being able to play Pankratops as an extension extender just starting your turn going second is very powerful then for going second change of heart and mind control we are playing all the i'm gonna take your cards cards we're not playing snatch steel actually so i actually just lied but the reason we're playing these ones is actually really important because you can use all these cards to help facilitate a lot of your link summons if you are going second and you know you're going second let's say you win game one you know you're going second into game two or even game three doesn't really matter you know you're going second you side these in they're not once per turns and the craziest part about that is your opponent has to use a negate if your opponent sets up a baron they have to use the baron negate on this okay cool i'm gonna activate mind control Baron negate. Okay, now I can combo. Wait a second. I actually have two mind control in my hand. Let me activate mind control. You're gonna negate this. I'm gonna go mind control again. Now I can take your Baron, use the Baron effect to pop a card you control, and then I can link away your Baron into one of my link monsters to help me kind of push for more damage, break more board even further if you make SP Little Knight or if you make Unicorn again. I don't have SP Little Knight, but you can make Unicorn here, shuffle a card away, and then boom. So mind control, absolutely insane card. The fact that we have this back at three is absolutely insane. And then of course for back row matchups, we're playing Harpy's Feather Duster as well as two Lightning Storm. While we have all the answers for front row matchups over here. Lightning Storm and Harpies are really powerful for back row matchups. I still like playing Pankratops into back row matchups, just a siding tip. I like to play this into back row matchups because most back row decks will have a monster at least on the board. And this kind of does put a lot of pressure on those kind of 
side decks, right? Keep in mind, I will say this with side decks before I continue here. This is all going to be up to personal preference. If you like certain cards, of course, I'm not going to stop you from playing certain cards. You guys can play evenly matched here as well. But uh, I just really wanted to show you guys how powerful the new mind control being back at three absolutely is. And you guys can just use this as a skeleton for your own side deck, right? If you're building a side deck and your locals is all combo players, make sure you can build your side deck to beat combo decks. If they're all back row players, make sure you build a side deck to beat the back row players, right? So that's why I'm kind of showing you guys just a quick skeleton. One card that I think is going to be absolutely insane in today's format is anti-spell. Unchained is a deck that got Shavara down to one, so they're very reliant on their spell cards now. Fire King is a deck that's always going to be reliant on their spell cards because they need Sanctuary, they need Fire King Island, they need a lot of their spells to resolve. A lot of decks, especially like stuff like Purely as well, because it lost CP memory now to two, also is going to need their spell cards. And being able to flip anti-spell once you set up a board a lot of the time is going to auto win you so many games, even though you guys might say, okay, but you were playing so many spell cards. Yeah, that is true, but if you're going first into games two or games three, being able to flip this once you do your full combo is going to be absolutely insane so three anti-spell fragrance and then lastly three solemn judgment when you are forced to go first with anti-spell fragrance and solemn judgment or i don't even want to say forced to go first but when you are choosing to go first into games two and three, games three you can side out a lot of the extra spell cards you guys may have or the extra extenders that you guys may not need let's say something like a radiant or assault synchron and side these in and then once you're able to make a board even a board as simple as a black winged assault dragon plus maybe like an abyss let's just say plus a twin shadow set like something like that is a very standard board you guys can make a board like that with these cards set and you're going to be winning the game 100%. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is Blackwing for the December 2023 format. This deck has so many different ways to combo. It has so many different extenders and cards that just help you push through so many different disruptions. And it's so consistent on its own with cards like Allure of Darkness and Small World to facilitate all your combos. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We are uploading every single day here in the month of December. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate every single one you and with that Spanko sign it out peace